What does yin yang, 3D printing, concrete, and candles have in common? Stay tuned and find out. Today I'm going to take you step by step through the process of design, 3D printing a mold, casting concrete, pouring candle wax. This is going to be a fun project. Looking forward to it. Welcome back to Timber West Design, where we talk everything timber structure and outdoor living. This project is about blending creativity with craftsmanship. And by the end, you'll have a unique concrete candle vessel that's going to add a touch of style to your home, whether you use it inside or outside in your patio. From CAD design to 3D printing molds to pouring the final wax, I'll walk you through every step to bring this project to life. Here are the supplies we're going to need. I'm going to make this project out of cementol. This is a great casting material. This project all starts with a good mold. This is the mold that we 3D printed. We're going to need some mold release. I like this canola oil. We're going to need some mixing bowls. These bowls are silicone. These are awesome. I use them for mixing. And then once you mix, you can pour from this, which is, works well. I'll have all the supplies listed in the description for the video. Spatula. You're going to need some way to mix. I love this drill mixer. Gets all the lumps out of the cement. Let's move on to paint. So I like to prime my products first. Then this is going to be two candles. We're going to do one dark and one light. So here's my colors for that. Now let's move on to the wax for the candle. I want to thank candlewick.com. They supplied all the components for me to make these candles. This is 100% natural soy wax. We're going to need a vessel to melt the wax in. We need a thermometer so we know how hot the wax is going to be. And then optionally, you can use fragrance or color. And today's video, I'm going to not use color, but I will definitely put a fragrance in. I love this yin yang shape. So we've got this drawn up like so. We're going to extrude it 100 millimeters tall. We're going to core out the middle part here, add some fillets. And now we're going to make the first half of the mold. So this gray part is the one side. We're gonna add some bolt flanges. Add the other side, add some bolt flanges for that. Now we're gonna make the top of the mold. So now we have three pieces. So we've got top mold, two side molds. This light blue is where the concrete will go. So we'll finish this mold up. Now I've got all the bolt holes. They're gonna help hold it together as well as register each mold to each other. And we're ready for printing. Watching the 3D printer in action is always fascinating. It layers the design with incredible precision, turning a digital concept into a physical object. This process ensures our mold is accurate and durable, ready to handle the weight and texture of the concrete. I want to thank this week's sponsor, Pale Blue Batteries. You know, I like nice high-end flashlights, and you know what powers my flashlights? Pale Blue rechargeable batteries. What I like about them is I can take a power bank on the go. There's a USB-C port right on the battery. I can plug it in, charge on the go. Pale blue batteries, they're awesome. It's time to assemble the mold. I've designed this to use quarter inch by one inch bolts. So we're almost ready to mix some concrete. There's one challenge we still have to overcome. We have a mold, but we don't know how much cement all to make. So here is the solution. We're gonna put this on the scale. We'll zero it out. We're going to fill it full of water. We're going to weigh the water. So the weight of the water was 786 grams. The formula to find out how much cement all you need is you take the water weight times 1.88, which equals 1,477 grams. That's how much cement all we're going to need. Now you take 25% of that, which is 369, and that is going to be our 4 to 1 cement all to water mix. 1,477 grams of cementol, 369 grams of water. It's time to add mold release. I like to have the mold open so I have good access to the surface. And I also like to use a box to spray my mold release just to con contain the spray a little bit. So we're gonna just put a light coating of this canola oil onto the molds. Don't need a ton, just enough to coat it. Put some on this section as well. I think we're good. I've pre-measured my concrete, my water, my mold has mold release. It's time to mix. So 
What I like to do is not pour all the water in at once. I'm gonna pour most of it, maybe three fourths of it in, and then we're gonna start mixing. Take the drill mixer, just start slow. Don't wanna to make too big of a mess. But the main thing here is just to get it all mixed in and get all the lumps out. Run this on the sides. Make sure we hit the bottom well. We want this to be about pancake batter consistency. Okay, I think we're there. I didn't add all the water. So I go more based on the consistency, but the four to one is pretty close. So now we just take this, make a pour spout out of it, and we fill up the mold. You just want to get it just to the edge. Take the spatula, get the rest out. I think, yeah, perfect. We're right about there. All right, let's give it about three hours and we'll demold and I'll see you back then. You can also tap it like this to get the air out. The mix is thin enough that it's pretty much out, but you can kind of levels it off a little bit and gets some of the air potentially out of there. And I think we're ready. Okay, it's been three hours. It's time to demold. Okay, all the bolts are off. It's time to demold. There we go, it's looking good. This is a little bit trickier to get off. Just gotta work around the edges. There we go, it's coming off. There, there's our part. Looks great. So for painting, I like to use a primer. Primer helps with adhesion, helps cover up some of the blems. Now on this one, we did the dark. Looks so sharp, I like the texture. On this one, it's got a little bit different texture. The together, they look really good. So it's time to pour some wax. How do we know how much candle wax to make? First, we take a scale. We take our candle vessel, set it on the scale. We're gonna put water in here. We're gonna see how much it weighs. Fill it up to the level you want the wax to be. Right about there, I'm at 458 grams. The formula is times that by 0.834, which equals 382 grams of wax per side. It's time to place the wick. So what we do is you take a hot glue gun, put a couple of dabs on the thing, place it in the bottom. I'm gonna put two wicks in each half here. There we go. So now we need to hold the wicks in place. So I'm gonna get some tape, just cut a little slit in there. And we'll do that for all four wicks. It's time to weigh out some wax and get it melting. So we put the vessel that holds the wax into a pot of water, which acts as a double boiler, and slowly melts the wax. We want the wax to be about 155 to 160 degrees. The wax is fully melted, it's time to add some fragrance. So you can add one ounce per pound. So if we convert that to grams, I have a total of 764 grams of wax, so I'm gonna put 47 grams of fragrance in. Now we need to let this incorporate, so we're gonna mix this for about three minutes and let this fully mix in. The wax is ready to pour, here we go. Looking good, maybe a little bit more in here. Let this uh, cool off and we'll see you in a little while. I'm calling an audible on this project. The tape didn't work out quite like I thought it was going to, so I cut these sticks with these little grooves in them and I think this is gonna work out better. The candles have set up nicely. It's time to remove the wick holders and we'll trim these wicks. You want about three eighths to a quarter of an inch, just like that. And these look great. Can't wait to light them, see how they look and smell. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about shade structures and outdoor living, go to my website at timberwestdesign.com. Please like, share, and subscribe for more fun, exciting projects. And we'll see you next time.